Managing Editor of HR Professional Magazine. I'm here today at HRPA 2018 Annual Conference and Trade Show, and I'm here with keynote speaker Margaret Trudeau, who's kindly made some time to speak with us. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, sis. So I was, I was able to actually attend your keynote, which is unusual, but I got to go to this one, which was great. And I was really interested in your view of how the response to mental health issues has changed over the years. You've seen it go from, you know, doubtful or yes. blaming to this acceptance and understanding. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? I think it, it, you're absolutely right and, and it was just fear and the not knowing, not understanding what was happening to someone who was suffering a mental Ill illness as opposed to a physical illness where it's clear what's happening. Uh, so what's happened in the last 10 years is we've had so many breakthroughs uh, in terms of understanding from what we now can see about brain function and dysfunction and how the hormones uh, uh, can, can be so out of whack causing someone to be really suffering either in depression or in mania or high anxiety. So we, we now have so much more information, concrete information, and so much more research into mental illness. And the most important thing is that we hopefully have, have come to the realization the shame is not having a mental illness. The shame is having one and not seeking treatment. Because treatment works, there can be recovery. But it's, it's a battle. You have to be proactive. You have to want to get better. And you have to reach out. And those two things can be huge obstacles for people to accept and then reach out. So what we have to do more and more is get the conversation going and make it just normal and easy for people to be able to admit that they're not doing as well as they wish they were doing mentally and that they need some help and, and for people who are around them to be able to to, to help direct them to, the, to, to help if they can't find the wherewithal themselves. And one thing that you said that really stuck with me, I thought it was amazing, was in the workplace when someone is going through these issues, the way that we respond to it, the people around them, could literally save their lives. Yes. Okay, so what do you think about um, the workplace response to mental health? I know it's really evolved. I think that what's been, uh, what I've seen happening more and more is managers in the uh, workplace taking on the responsibility of not just ensuring that the work is being done uh, by each of their, their employees, but also the that their employees are are well and are 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 able to do what they can be out of out of good health. Um, for then the manager to be able to identify someone as having a mental illness and needing help is essential. It may be the first person who has really noticed that the person is going through it by seeing each day. The way we the only way you can really diagnose and understand mental health someone's mental health issues is by their watching their patterns of behavior and what in the repetitive nature of work every day you will see someone who is doing the same things or making the same mistakes or not succeeding because of the same problems and to be open but the truth is if, if the person is is instead of feeling inclusion and support and understanding and compassion if they feel ridicule and humiliation and disdain which was the old man model don't want that guy's crazy don't want anything to do with him uh, then you, you you will ruin their life because they won't get back to work they'll have to leave whereas you can encourage them to to get the help they need and to take the time to get better we used to have something that we we didn't weren't mentally ill but we used to have something called a mental health day that oh. you took off okay. <laughs> and everyone understood that at work was you said I'm having a mental health day and it was you're not faking it that you have a cold or the flu you just need time for yourself and that's what people have to understand you can't we're not robots we're human and we all go through things and we need the support and kindness of each other. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. now you also mentioned the Me Too movement, which is so timely right now. Mm -hmm. And I know a huge workplace conversation that's going on. And one thing you said was that kind of voicing that trauma and feeling that people are listening and supporting is so key for healing. Um, so do you have any further thoughts on that? Well, I know that it is healing to, to, de to deny or to bury and to not give credence that something that happened to you that, that did belittle you and, and made you feel powerless and small 
small and intimidated and bullied and, and, and that's what bullies do and that's what harassment's about and it's making uh, someone feel bigger by putting you down. Uh, by voicing it, you will see it will disappear. It won't be the big issue that you thought it was because you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And and the be the most important thing is not to get stuck in what happened, to move on from it through expressing it, voicing it, but probably with a good doctor or a good friend, not necessarily the media, because I don't think everybody needs to be blamed. We're all part of the game in a certain way. Uh, the rules have changed now, thank goodness for women, because they were stacked against us. Men were allowed to take advantage of us in the workplace because we didn't have any power. We couldn't say anything because we'd lose our jobs, we'd lose our positions, whereas now, no. <laughs> we, it's clear that it's not Acceptable bullying and harassment and violations of, of someone's personal space is wrong. And it, it all comes out of being kind and being considerate. And I think we Canadians, we've raised, I don't think we have to worry, I think we've raised fabulous kids who are kind and respectful. And there's always rotten apples, but maybe it's part of the past where uh, uh, men assumed with their power and with their wealth or whatever, they, they, they had some advantage that they could play. They didn't. They don't. No. And, and women, women are strong. And we, uh, by voicing, by talking about it, by, by finding out you're not alone, and then by getting the help for you to maybe process what happened to you in a different way so that you can get out of the, the trauma of it. And that's what helped us. Well, thank you so much You're for so taking welcome. the time to speak with us. You're Appreciate so it. I'm Liz Bernier, and this is HR Today.